For today's episode, we have the president of the Riverside Teachers Union, Tina Jugavaz. Tina grew up in the Longueuil area. She has a sociology degree with a minor in psychology from Bishop's University and an education degree from McGill University. She currently lives in Mont Saint Grégoire, which is close to Saint Jean sur Richelieu. Tina was a teacher for 18 years before beginning her work with the RTU team, which she has been a part of now for two and a half years. She is wrapping up her first year as RTU president. Like any busy working mom, she has several interests such as reading, painting, beekeeping, and getting together with great friends. Welcome, Tina. Can you tell us the area that the Riverside Teachers Union covers? Well, it's actually a quite big, uh, quite a big area. We actually go from Sorrel to Busherville to St. Coles, uh, no, not St. Coles, it's uh, Delson and um, Chambly, Belleuil, and then we have the core, which is like the Longdale, St. Chubert, Greenfield Park uh, area. So uh, we're, we have quite a few in the core and then a few scattered out. So it's, it's a big area. Yeah, it is a big area. Tina, tell us about the different schools that the Riverside Teachers Union covers. Well, we have uh, 18 elementary schools and four high schools. Uh, We also have the adult sector, uh, VT and AG. Uh, So about five buildings for the adult sector, 18 elementary and four high schools. Uh, But in two of our elementary schools, it's uh, an actual reach, two reach buildings, which is our closed uh, special needs schools. Okay. And in two of our high school, we actually have satellite classes for our reach, uh, either high school students or older elementary. Um, so yes, we have a, a, a vast majority of different levels within our school. And uh, we also have PACE, which is uh, a special needs program for students at uh, Champlain College. Okay. So they have the experience of being in uh, a CJEP but uh, they're in a closed classroom where they can audit classes. So they get the whole uh, CJEP experience, which is fantastic, yeah. That's amazing. And so the team that you're working with, tell us about your team and what everybody does. Oh, fantastic team. Uh, We have uh, Anne St. Pi, who is our uh, uh, office manager, I guess you could say, like she is the core, focus of the office where she takes on our phone calls. She she directs the phone calls when we get them to the office. She's the one that helps us organize our our workshop, our, our, uh, our the teacher convention, because we often have our, our social our social room. And uh, she organizes that. She organizes our retiring teacher party at the end of the year and our thank you dinner for our members. She helps organize our new teachers dinner. So she, she's like the organizing force behind our office. Um, and um, we really do appreciate that she answers all the phone calls in person. So, you know, we don't get the answering machine. So that was something a lot of our members appreciate and we really want to keep that going. So she's our first frontline individual at the office. Then we have uh, Mary Marks, who is uh, one of my executive assistants, who handles a lot of the mat leaves, some of the uh, salary insurance, uh, some of the retreats, uh, and, well, retirements. And then we also have Helen Rodriguez, who is my other executive uh, assistant, who is really uh, updating our whole database. Uh, okay. She's bringing RTU from the, um, I, I guess, dark ages. Uh, into the modernized data collection uh, aspect where we actually have a a dossier for all the teachers. So then in or out of the office, no matter who's dealing with the dossier, the file is there that we all have access to. Okay. Uh, And she also handles other issues, like similar issues to Mary. Like we all work as a team. We all bounce ideas off of each other. So when we get a case, it's not once handling it without discussing with anybody else. We're all talking about it. So if somebody is absent one day and a teacher calls, somebody else can step up to the plate and help the teacher. So. Everyone's aware of what's going on. Okay. Yeah. 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 Super important. It, it does really help because there was a funny story one time where we, uh, after one of our strike days, we had a delegates meeting and we talked about some of our delegates concerns prior to the meeting. And thank God we did because technology on my end wasn't working. So Mary was filling in all the questions because we talked about it. So when we get our questions ahead of time, we tend to discuss, okay, how are we going to answer this? So, so the teamwork really, really does help. 
That's amazing. And Tina, please tell everybody, what was your journey into becoming a local union president? Because it doesn't just happen. The, often there's a story. So I want to hear yours. Well, I started off as a newbie, really. Um, I think it was my third contract, possibly, um, at St. John's. So I was working at St. Lambert Elementary, and then I went all the way to St. John, which is another one of our outs. I think I forgot to mention St. John, but our, one of our outs flying schools. And um, it was my second contract there. And Lisa Jaworski was uh, a delegate, and she asked, hey, do you want to come and join at the beginning of the school year? And I said, sure. What, what do I have to lose? And so that was my entry into being a union delegate. And then I was a union delegate up until I became uh, an executive at the at RTU. And I was approached by Stephen Lesser and said, hey, do you want to try treasurer this year? And I said, sure. Wow. And was never, I was never shy to try new things. Um, yeah. And then when Mike, uh, Mike Dorado ended up going to QPATS, uh, I started. We still I applied for the Let's job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I applied for the job and I got it. And then when Stephen Lesser went to QPAT, I put my name in the in the hat for RTU president and uh it all happened that way. That's <laughs> so, amazing. So a say little, a yes to opportunities. Yeah. 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 So doors open, I kind of walked through and I always had a tendency to have a unionized mind because I always felt like the underdogs had to be protected and and looked out for so I was never a a type to not uh, make sure that people were taken care of so it just kind of fell in naturally and and yeah and uh, I don't regret a moment of trying something new and trying something new that's such an important thing and understanding that when you try something new the expectation isn't that you already know exactly what to do that you're going to learn along the way right yes Yes. And we're still learning. <laughs> we're yeah. still, you know, like this is, I just finished my first year as uh, our, well, I'm finishing off my first year RTU president and, and I was just acclaimed. So I'm heading into my second year next year and, and it's still a learning game. So, and it is a lot of pressure where you feel that you need to have the answers, but one of our, our go-tos is like, listen, we'll get back to you. And this is where the team really comes into power where everybody has their strengths and they kind of throw it into the, you know, let's find a solution basket kind of thing and everybody yes. pulls their weight together and we find usually a good solution and then we get back to our members that way but uh but yeah it's no you don't know anything and I think even if I'm going to be here for another so many years I'm not going to know everything because everything's constantly changing we have a new collective agreement that's in the process of being written I'm going to have to learn all that again exactly. you know, all the changes it's never never stagnant it's a constant evolution it's a constant evolution I think actually it gets dangerous when you think you know everything. Anyway, that's just yeah. my opinion. <laughs> I don't so, know everything. I keep telling people I don't know everything. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. And we have to, and sometimes you change your mind. You know something and then, oh, you know something else after. And that's the beauty of it. Or it's a new a- situation comes up that all of a sudden it presents it from a different angle. That, hey, I didn't think about it that way. And yes. we can start looking at things that way too. And yeah, so it's constantly, constantly moving. Oh, yeah. I love it. <laughs> Tina, what's something you wish that more members understood about the union in their professional lives? We're here to help. That's what the union is here for. We're here to help. We're here for you to be aware of your rights and and your privileges, uh, things that you can and can't do. Because as much as we would love to be able to have the right to write our own rules, we don't. A lot of it's written in black and white with our collective. But there is room in there for you to know where you can take a stand and say no, and where you might have to say, okay, kind of have to go with the flow here. I find as a new teacher, when I was a new teacher, I was willing to accept a lot because I wanted that job. I was willing to go above and beyond because I wanted that job. And all of us are in this position in teaching because most of us want to do the best for our students. And even if you're doing it in theory for the big guy, right, our school board or our principal, a lot of us are, are doing it really for the kids and that's fine. But at the end of the day, you need to know what your limits are. You need to know where your rights are, where you can say, no, I've had enough. I'm done for this right now because I need to take care of myself because we are losing so many teachers at the end that are burnt out, exhausted because they keep piling on and keep piling on and keep accepting because they're constantly saying, I could do it. I could do it. They need me. I can do it. 
And I think as a new teacher or even as a senior teacher, we need to be reminded that we need to put ourselves first. And, and I know that sounds like a little bit of a cliche, but it's the truth. Because at the end of the day, as much as our students love us, as much as our, 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 our coworkers love us and our men might love us, we're replaceable, but we're not replaceable in our own lives and we're not replaceable in our family's lives. So we have to make sure that that's priority. And then our teaching, yes, it can still be priority, but it can't replace you as a person or you as a family member in your family. Yes. I think they need to know we're here to help guide. We're here to help direct. We do not go into battle mode as soon as we get an email or a call from a teacher. That's not how we function. We tend to gather all the information. And sometimes we're just a sounding board, a venting center. Uh, and until the teacher says, hey, I've tried A, B, C, D. I'm, I'm at a loss. I don't know what to do. I need your help. That's when we start engaging. We don't engage in anything unless the teacher says, we need your help. And we don't release any hounds. We don't go into battle stations just at a phone call or an email. We're really... Let's talk about it. Let's figure it out. Because sometimes we can figure things out just through a conversation. And we could avoid a big explosion just by solving it through conversation sometimes. And it's empowering for a teacher to know some things they're able to to solve on their own if they're just if you're given an idea and to try something. And sometimes it ends there. And that's the ideal yeah. situation, right? It's just. Yeah. And it's empowering to say that two-letter word. No, I'm, I'm <laughs> done. And, and it's funny because it was actually in our workshop this year that uh, Stephanie McFollin, if I'm saying her name right, actually ended up bringing that up, that that N-O is a very powerful word. And we don't give ourselves credit enough to use it mm. appropriately, right? Like it's, we tend to say no when we're about to burn out our candles on both ends and we're at, at that breaking point. But we could be saying it so much earlier so that we're not at that breaking point. I think that's very empowering too that we have to realize we can we can say no and it's okay you're never too green or inexperienced to join uh it was funny we went to a school today and I was talking to some of the student teachers I said you know what get involved get involved with the union because that's when you get to know your rights and 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 what you can stand on with your two legs and say this is it I'm good or Hey, I gotta go with the flow, right? But there's you're never it's never too soon to join. And and basically by doing that, you're just empowering yourself. You're making sure that you are going to be taking care of yourself and that people are out there and knowing that you're not that pushover. And uh basically say yes to opportunities. You never know. You never know. And and you don't have to be the delegate, you could be an alternate, you could just partake in committees that gives your voice at your school level. There's so many ways that you could take part in that you get the control, that you get to have a say in how your school's running, how everything's going around. So take those opportunities and say yes, partake, get involved. That's how you're gonna learn. I love it. Let's Thank you it so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>